Andrew Yang joins us tonight for more perspective here. You may know him as former 2020 candidate for president, New York City mayor, but also a lawyer, entrepreneur, author, and founder of the Forward Party. Andrew, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Chance. Great to be here. At COP26, we see more pledges, uh, this methane breakthrough. You have a unique way, I think, of boiling down these really important, humongous topics to plain English, like you know, methane. I couldn't tell you exactly what it does, um, <laughs> but here's the question that we all need to know. Is President Biden doing enough on climate? I like to believe he's doing everything that he can. Uh, having spoken to the president a little while ago about this, I mean, he, he sees it, he knows it, he takes it very seriously. Uh, I think we all can say pretty clearly that the world should be doing much, much more, and the U.S. Uh, hopefully can play a stronger role in that. Do you get the sense over there that they're talking to average people, though? Because it, it seems at times that they're talking to themselves or or scientist, whereas you really do need to get buy-in on the ground level as well. Well, the, the thing that I'm concerned about, I think that we all sense, Chance, is that they're going to come to various agreements. Uh, those agreements are going to point in a positive direction. We're not sure whether they're actually going to live up to those agreements. We're not sure whether various companies within these nations uh, are, are going to actually change their practices at the scale. Uh, the fact is we're running out of time. We're years behind this curve. It's getting worse than many scientists could ever have imagined. Uh, and, and so I think that's the real fear is that they, they come together, they have this agreement, but then how much of the practices change within various countries? And that would require a real sacrifice on the part of many firms in particular that right now are just going to do whatever is the most cost effective. So you need real leadership and governments actually riding some of these companies to change practices. Hmm. Something that I think people like about you is that you're not afraid of a big idea, even if it seems like, oh, is this too big? And so I thought, what would Andrew recommend here in the U.S.? I'm thinking, let's say we really get away from coal at some point. Would we go the way of Germany? You know, they have these programs. You get paid, you reskill, you launch this second career. You have the dignity of work and expertise. Is that feasible here? Oh, I want us to get better at some of those things, Chance. I think the most direct thing we could do is put a price on carbon. Uh, the, the fact is, in America, money talks and markets can move mountains. And so you need to create a market for the externality of pollution. Uh, and believe it or not, there is some momentum on Capitol Hill around making this change. Uh, Joe Manchin wasn't a fan this past time, but uh, but there, there are a lot of senators that I know love this particular policy. So that's a big idea that would have massive impact that I think is totally realistic and we might even see make it into policy. Really? In Build Back Better? Uh, there is even a small chance, I think, it makes it into Build Back Better, but it, it's on the foreground of a lot of legislators' minds. Okay, okay. You made Universal Basic Income, UBI, famous. At first, people laughed. Now it's somewhat mainstream in a lot of areas. It's actually getting piloted in Chicago. They're doing something like $500 a month to a few hundred families, no strings attached. In LA, I think it's going to be $1,000 per family for some amount of time. And it's being floated around DC, some other areas. What have you learned as UBI does get its test run? Well, two-thirds of Americans are for it. Uh, like you said, it wasn't the case when I started my presidential run. It went from 27% to 65%, so thank you, America. If, 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 if. Uh, the child tax credit has been the single biggest data point in this, and 442 economists signed a letter saying they want to see it into perpetuity because it's just been such a pure good. It's lift, lifted millions of Americans out of poverty, given kids a chance to learn better nutrition, uh, better stress levels and mental health in the house. So to the extent that Americans are feeling the effects of cash relief, they love it. And that's why you see support continue to go up. And I'm thrilled that cities are piloting various versions of it too. And the pay for, it's, it's paid for how? Well, in my mind, we have to start harnessing the gains of AI and technology because right now those companies don't pay meaningful taxes and it's kind of the worst of all worlds. Uh, but I, I will say that right now, 
we're putting a lot of money out into the system, and it's not going to Americans' uh, pockets for the most part. The CARES Act was $2.2 trillion. Families saw about 17% of that. Uh, $2.2 trillion, just so you, you get a sense of it, that was enough to give every American 1000 bucks a month for six months, every man, woman, and child. So we're already making very big moves. It's just not being felt by the average American to the extent it should be. Or young Americans, who I imagine are most of the viewers of Newsy, since, you know, like that, I, I feel like young hip people watch Newsy. So, you know, <laughs> like, like you should feel it. If you feel it, then that, that yes. We like to think young and hip. Yes, if you're at home watching right now, you just heard it from Andrew Yang. One more question here on, on the economy, though. Um, you know, when I often talk about jobs being lost, my husband's an economist, and he says nobody talks about automation, that really automation is the big job killer, and automation isn't going to slow down. What do we do about that? We need to put more resources into people's hands so they can effectively transition, because the fact is it is going to speed up uh, trying to slow it down is not going to be an effective approach in a lot of different industries. A lot of the times it's kind of a silent killer. Um, the, one of the examples I try and use, Chance, is Google's AI doing the work of call center workers, which we can all see pretty clearly. That's probably here right now. There are two million Americans who work in call centers. Most of them pay taxes. So if you replace them with AI, what do those two million Americans do? Uh, and the fact is our government's really bad at targeted retraining, really terrible. <laughs> and so uh, uh, in my mind, we, we have to try and reinvent our economy from the ground up, from people up, families up, communities up, put buying power into people's hands and then let new endeavors flourish. That's a very big vision. But like you said, uh, you know, like that's what I'm known for. Uh, and the, the unfortunate part of American life is that we're just so behind the curve that if you want to try and solve a problem, it's going to seem really big and dramatic because the problem has been building up for years. It is election day. A lot of people say every single time this comes around, I hate choosing between the far right, the far left. I've done on the show several times over the years saying, you know, we don't even have to have primaries and they don't have to be exactly like this. You're actually trying to do something about that. Oh, yeah, the duopoly is really killing us all, <laughs> honestly. And, and so I, I wrote a book uh, forward about the fact that we shouldn't expect the system to work because it's actually not designed to work. It's designed to reward polarization uh, and people blaming the other side, and we're seeing that in different ways. So we have to get with the program and join the rest of the developed democ democratic world. So the UK has five parties, Germany has seven parties, Sweden has eight parties. I talked to a political scientist who said the optimal number of parties, in his opinion, in the United States of America would be, drum roll, between four and six. So the question is, how do you get this broken duopoly to four to six parties? And the answer is open primaries and ranked choice voting and let a bunch of new parties emerge, including my own forward party. So we're the party to enable more parties. If you don't like the duopoly, this is the mechanic shift that we need. And what would that look like? Because there's a humongous obstacle right now. It's not written into law that someone has to be a Republican or Democrat, obviously. Usually if someone is a third party, they're called a spoiler candidate. What is the biggest obstacle to actually making that happen? The biggest obstacle is the adoption of ranked choice voting so we can get rid of the spoiler effect, Chance. And, and so that is the canard that gets put out there. It's like, oh, spoiler, spoiler. It's like, well, if you want to solve that, then you just change to ranked choice voting and you make it so that people can vote for whomever they want. And then if someone doesn't achieve a majority, then their votes flow to the person who they ranked second. And this would also discourage negative campaigning. It would let people from minor parties run without fear of getting bludgeoned, essentially, with the fear cudgel is what I call it, where people are like, oh, you're going to mess it up for, you know, like this side and you're going to empower that side. It's like, well, if that's a problem for you, let's just switch to ranked choice voting. Uh, and the partisans, what's interesting, Chance, is that partisans don't want to hear about solutions a lot of the time. They just want to get mad because at this point, our system actually rewards people for uh, getting you mad and depressed and not for solving problems. <laughs> that, that's the fundamental shift that we have to make. Andrew Yang, the man whose ideas and politics do not live in one box. Thank you for joining us here on Newsy. Chance, thank you. Let's do it. Let, let's break up this duopoly. This duopoly is going to doom us. We can all sense it. Break the doom loop.